Today, I want to talk about Microsoft Teams meeting apps, and I want to give you a sample on the pre-meeting and the in-meeting experience. And the sample is an idea given to me by Microsoft, by Bob German and by Marty Chaik also today in the call. And thanks for your support, by the way, because they were not only giving the idea, they were also supporting me about the um, background stuff because this is relatively new. Short about me, my name is Markus Möller. For those about uh, you who don't know me, um, Microsoft 365 developer expert. I'm working for Avanade in Germany, and you can find me on Twitter as well as via my public blog, where I also illustrate the given sample today. Let's directly jump into the demo to first show what we have and later quickly explain how it works. Let's first start with uh, how to install a, a quick meeting app into a meeting. So therefore, we first have to create a meeting. Two we already have. And what's really important is uh, to have this uh, apps uh, up and running is you always need a meeting with at least one attendee. There can one use one of my demo users and send this out. Once we have this meeting, we can open or edit it again, and then we can add a given Teams app. In my case, I already installed it, but I could also sideload it here from there, but I have already installed it and running it. So in my case, this is a tab, and uh, as you might know how to install it regularly, um, this is quite the same. You install your tab with the configuration. In my case, I don't need it. And what we have here now already, and what you see here already now, is the so-called um, pre-meeting experience, meaning we have a tab in our meeting, which is not running yet. But uh, this is, uh, in my case, this is the purpose that all the attendees can record their name to help others later on in uh, if they are in doubt about their pronunciation. And therefore, I have a record area here. And this works simply uh, like a speech message in WhatsApp you would like. So push the button. Uh, once you push it, um, you can record it. Once you lose it, the recording ends. Markus Möller demonstrating live. What happened now is the audio got recorded and will be stored in the background in a configured SharePoint library. And there we have it back. We also have some user information like a photo or so. And what I additionally did, I created a custom audio control and was not using the, the standard one. And I will later show you why. And once Markus Möller demonstrating live, we hear uh, what we recorded. I hope you can also hear it. And this is what you can do uh, in pre-meeting, what every participant can do. Now it becomes a bit tricky because I would like to show you now here directly the in-meeting experience, but therefore I need some help because this in-meeting experience currently only works with a physical Teams desktop client. And this is what I had to prepare with another machine beside my currently actively running Teams client here where I, from where I'm presenting. And this is another private laptop and here, I have prepared another demo already because I did already several recordings. And this meeting now we can directly join. If we can have the microphone or not, doesn't really matter. We also do not really need the video. It's all disturbing. And what we see here now, if you pay attention on the icons above, here where we can also give feedback and so on, here, we have an additional custom icon, which is our app that we have. And this app we can now open up like you could also do for, um, like you can also do for the chat or for the uh, attendees. And here we have all the recordings uh, of the attendees that already recorded their name. And you can now play back if you're in doubt about their pronunciation. Hans Hansen. Klaus Klausen. Markus Möller. So that's it. This is how it works 
in the in-meeting experience. And as you know from the chat, uh, this in-meeting experience is only valid for the user who picks it. So in my case, I see it now, the others might not see it, but then the others uh, see it when they open it themselves. So it's like you, my, one of you might have, have opened the chat here in the uh, running call, the others might have not. Yeah. There are other options where you can also share something, but uh, this I will show you in the slides back. And I think that's all from the demo side. And now we can go back to our slides and explain how this works. As I already said, uh, there are some prerequisites uh, what you need. Um, you need a meeting with at least one participant to install an app. For the in-meeting experience, you need a physical Teams desktop client and, and not a web client or uh, also a uh, virtual client like uh, Windows 365 or so. This is currently not supported. What you additionally need, and this you might even need on, on, on two levels, if you do it like I did, um, you need some device permissions. One maybe for the browser, as I was recording the pre-meeting experience from a browser client, but also the Teams client now requests device permissions. And this will be handled via the Teams manifest uh, first and then by via user acceptance. I can show you the Teams manifest in a minute and the user acceptance, you can also see some screenshots in my blog. And of course, uh, you need this Teams tab application and a specific Teams manifest. And there we will come to in the over next slide. We also have some additional options. I already touched this somehow. So I called this um, pre or post meeting experience, which is quite the same area. This is, can be uh, in parallel to the Teams chat or to the meeting chat, as well as uh, the meeting itself. This is currently quite the same. And you also have the shown in meeting experience as a side panel. But this can also show up as a dialog box, which is more centered, or as an in meeting stage. And then the opposite to the side panel, the stage, if I open the stage, which can be, for instance, initiated by one participant from the side panel, then it's like when he presents for all. So if you have something, some content that you would like to present on demand to all users coming from an app or so, then you would use the stage panel. As already announced, let's now have a quick look at um, what specifics we have in the Teams manifest. Yeah. On the one hand, we have a scope, which at least needs to be group chat. And then we have the context and the meeting surface, which work somehow in parallel right now. This is um, where we really say, hey, this app shall show up, shall be available in the meeting details tab or in the chat tab, which is the pre-meeting experience, but it should be also available in the meeting side panel, for instance. And last but not least, we have the device permissions. And here we are asking for media, which is uh, uh, not, not only audio, but it's also uh, video in that case, but we only need the audio permissions. The next thing, which is quite specific uh, in terms of uh, in, in the opposite to a normal Teams tab, is we have some specific parameters for the meeting, which I also used in this sample. On the one hand, I used the meeting ID. Uh, this, this comes from the context. This meeting ID is a specific to it. Uh, it's not the same like the ID when you have it in your event or an event of the participants and also not in the online meeting ID. This is a specific ID for the meeting, but you can treat it and what I do as a unique key so I can store my recordings, for instance, in combination with the meeting ID so that I clearly know these recordings are for that meeting and these recordings are for another meeting. The second thing uh, what I'm using is the so-called frame context. And this is here in the recording area. And the recording area, I'm only showing, as you might have seen, in the pre-meeting experience. Yeah, you have seen it in a browser when I recorded it, but when I was switching to the Teams client, to the in-meeting experience, I did not show it anymore. And this is what I'm here checking for. Am I in the frame context content, which is uh, in that case, the pre-meeting one, or this could be also, uh, I don't know by heart, now I write uh, side panel or meeting side panel or so, then I know, hey, now I'm in a side panel running and then I can show up different things if I would like to do. Next, uh, some things about the recording. What you see on the left-hand side is uh, simply the UI stuff. So here I have a button with a microphone icon. Yeah? And once I on mouse down, 
I record some data and on mouse up, I stop the recording. This is what you've seen. And the recording uh, takes place on the right side. And what I'm using here still is um, the Navigator SDK, so from the browser stuff. There's also a Teams SDK already available for that, but this is currently only supported for mobile devices. And there was, uh, this is why I was uh, still keeping my fingers off here, because uh, mobile devices, of course, much harder. When you only have mobile devices uh, running, much harder to investigate and to debug or to test it out. So the first thing what we are doing here is uh, we try to get the user media, so the microphone access. And once we have it here, then we instantiate a media recorder, and this media recorder uh, gets a MIME type. We try to get the, uh, the first track for it. And then uh, on start, I, I shorten this up a bit that you, it fits on one slide that I can make it uh, visible here. Set recording is nothing else than something uh, putting to the state, hey, the recording is running now, because then I need to uh, display a different microphone, uh, a filled out microphone instead of an empty one, and so on. It's not that important. But once we have the data, we push it to our current chunk. Um, and once the recording stops, of course, once again, putting it to the state. And then we try to get the track and we try to push back the audio stream to an, uh, from an upper component uh, coming to a callback method. That's it so far how this works. You might have also seen this in the browser. This is uh, as I'm using the um, the uh, navigator thing is that uh, the browser, of course, pays attention. Hey, there's a recording running and this uh, will get off once the uh, recording is stopped. And uh, yeah, this is how it looks like in the uh, how it looked like uh, simply that we had this uh, two microphone icons the empty and the filled out one so that you can see that you still push the button. And then Last but not least, what I did is what I was creating is a custom audio control. Um, this is also quite simple. I used several icons here, and then uh, I uh, yeah I put some methods on it on the media stream. And what you also have is the audio component. This is the standard audio component. And if you remove here the controls tag, which you do not see here, then this audio control the standard audio control does not show up, but physically is still available and gives us things like this here uh, that we can pause it or we can play it or we can put the volume, uh, increase it, or we can uh, put it to mute or so. No, oh, here's mute, sorry. That. For those of you who might not know what I'm talking about in terms of the custom audio control, uh, the standard audio control looks a bit like this. And my custom one you have seen looks like this or this. And this is also the reason, because this custom control, I'm using the uh, Fluent UI React North Star components, can easily adjust it based on the Teams theme. Yeah, And this, I think, looks much better than the other one. This breaks a bit up. That's all from my side. Here are the typical resources, my blog series on that sample, but also the PMP sample itself in the repository, and the official Microsoft documentation on Teams meeting apps. That's for my side. Thank you. Awesome stuff, Marcus. A really incredible feedback in the chat. Uh, there's some questions in there. I'll let you go address those uh, while we move of into course, our yeah. next demo. Excellent job. Mm -hmm.